The, the place that scared me the most with that second was I had to cross the ridge line of Sleeping Deer. So this is the, uh, the point where I have to start going up and it's really steep and it's just white out. And that was a steep ridge line that I thought had some potential avalanche risk. I'm gonna assess it when I go up. If I don't feel good about it, I'll come back down. And so I thought, I'm just gonna go to it I'm going to look at it, assess the snow. If I don't feel comfortable with it, I'll find another route or wait a day till the snow settles. But I was actually able to cross that ridge line pretty easily. I got down to this, this road, this road that went from Chalice all the way to Sleeping Deer. So I made it to the road, and this road goes all the way to Chalice. And it's a, it's a road that's surrounded by wilderness, but the road itself is actually not even considered wilderness. This road is about 8,000 or 9,000 feet of elevation. This ridge stays really high, so I'm not looking forward to camping out, you know, on the road, but I might have to. And then from here on out, I'll be boiling snow. Uh, I'll be melting snow just to drink water because I don't think I'm gonna drop into those drainages. Little funnel system. Snow is not that clean. When you drink it, there's a whole bunch of floaties in there. And so I think that just got me jarty and got me sick. So when I'm crossing this road too, that's like, jardia has set in, I'm pooing all the time. So I've been running into poo issues. I have to, I have an urge to poo every time I have an urge to fart, and so that's not good. And I ran out of toilet paper. I would say this road was extremely difficult to get across. I mean, it took me, I think I was on this road for four days straight because the road itself is about 30 miles long. But there was one part of the road, I think it was the second to last day, where I thought, I've got to take a break, I've got to hike a mountain without my pack and ski a couple laps. That was it. That was so nice. Short, but just so nice. Yeah. Yes. Tomorrow. Looking forward to tomorrow. Hopefully, I'll be in a car, get a good meal. We will see my wife and kid at the end of the day. But that night was the craziest night because I had the most vivid dreams I've ever had in my whole life. Dreams where the temperatures started out really cold at night, but then they rose in the middle of the night. And I had dreams that my tent was flooding with water. Um, I had dreams that I saw a friend that came and said, hey, I'm meeting you here. You told me to meet you here at 5.30 in the morning. Let's go. Okay, let's go. I've reached the border of the Frank Church Wilderness. So this is the other side. Uh, beyond here is just my exit to Chalice. So I'm officially out of the wilderness. You have millions of acres of forests in the United States covered with snow in the winter, the idea of ski packing makes you ultimately free. I felt really, I felt satisfied when I'd finished. I don't know exactly what it was, but maybe it was just the sense of putting down a goal and then not giving up. I made it. This is the end. 
and I'm limping because my blister hurts so bad. I made it. There's been many times in my life where I try something and it's not until the third, the fourth, maybe even the tenth or twelfth times that I actually succeed. And taking the humble pie of, yeah, I came home, but I went back and I finished it. I felt like I didn't have to think about it again and it was done. I am happy that my son had the opportunity to pursue some of the passions that he has now. And I don't think it would have been possible had uh, we had we been separate, not been separated. I, I would have loved to pursue what he, he has now, but maybe, I don't know. You know, it's like, if Dan hadn't been separated from me, would he be the backcountry skier he is today? This is the most magnificent country in the world. The Wilderness Bill preserves for our posterity nine million acres. And, the, the, and I look at him and I, and I tell people, I show them and, and I say, you know, when I grow up, I want to be Dan. He really is designing his own life. He's fulfilling every philosophy that I have but didn't 100% realize and, and fulfill. I'm watching a son do that. To me, that is beyond fantastic. And I, I have so much joy just watching his videos and just watching his life. I just hope that he can uh, continue on and pass that on to his son and those around me. And I live where a lot of people would gladly pay anything you ask for the privilege of coming on a vacation. He's a great son. And I love him. <laughs>